Good morning, welcome to this update on Friday the 8th of July, coming to you from Phoenix Blue. I'm Tom Colley and I will be talking to you about the markets and the news this morning. And we'll start with the news and yes, it's NFP day again. Um, if you remember last month we had some really, really bad uh, non-farm employment change numbers. This is the number here. Um, came in at 38,000. There were some um, mitigating circumstances um, that meant it wasn't quite that bad. Um, however, um, it was still a very negative number and today will be significant because if we get another very poor number um, it will not be able to be written off last month as a blip um, it will be a trend or the start of a trend the number we're looking for or the number forecast uh, this month is 175,000 um, so anything above that's going to be perceived as positive um, that will, should give us some dollar strength um, a sell-off in equities uh, if we get um, a, a significantly lower figure we're going to see dollar weakness um, potentially a rally on equities particularly American equities um, and we will also see if that was scenario um, a jump in uh, yen strength and we'd expect to see uh, Bank of Japan intervention on that but we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to um, the yen chart. Now just going back earlier in the week to uh, indicators that you could look at uh, in terms of what you might expect from non-farm on Wednesday we had the uh, ISM non-manufacturing PMI this is effectively the service industries um, in the states now manufacturing in the states is is much more um, important than it is in the UK for instance but the services still provide a very major part of the economy anything above 50 on this number um, is the services area of the economy expanding so you can see we got some really nice nice numbers in there which would suggest um, that the non-farm could produce some decent figures then yesterday we had two other pieces of information we had the uh, non-farm employment change from ADP um, again uh, this isn't the the same as the non-farm employment change but it always comes in um, the day before or sometimes two days before and you can see against a forecast of 158 we've got 172,000 um, so a positive there we also had unemployment claims that come in weekly um, and as you can see those have those claims have reduced from 269 or from 270 to 254 against a forecast of 269 so looking at those three and they they don't guarantee anything but they do suggest that um we, we could well be looking at some decent non-farm uh, employment change numbers we're also very interested in the average earnings we've been interested in these all year um the uh, employment rate suggests that there's nearly full employment or of those looking for work there's near full employment that should uh, increase average earnings um, as there uh, isn't supply doesn't meet demand uh, in the uh, employment sector so we'll be watching that this afternoon now that's at 1.30 um, be aware that you don't want to be in unless you're specifically trading non-farm you don't want to be in the markets um, after maybe 12 o'clock something like that um, any trades that you have open you want to be thinking about what your risk is and maybe closing out some profits um, trailing the stops uh, to reduce your risk if you've got any pending orders um, then um, you want to be looking at cancelling those um, with a view to restating reinstating them after the weekend um, when the volatility has settled down okay um, news for ahead of that today we've just got the Canadian news at the same time employment change and unemployment rate there but that will pale into insignificance versus NFP right over in Asia um, overnight uh, what I've done here is I'm taking a, a weekly look at the charts we normally look at this is the Shanghai composite the composites of all the uh, major Chinese um, equities markets as we can see we've had a second bullish week um, here in Japan uh, sorry in China um, we're coming up towards this key level here and, and this downward trend line we're in, in a triangle um, are we going to see, see a break above and that's going to 
potentially lead to um, new highs for the year. 2016, we, we started extremely low, or we fell extremely low through here. Um, April was the high point. Are we going to see new highs in this market? Um, bearing in mind that it's, it's much more controlled than um, Western equities markets. Here we've got the US dollar Chinese one exchange rate. We talked about this earlier in the week. Um, we talked about it reaching pre, um, new highs. Um, well, at the end of the week, we've actually got, um, assuming this is the weekly close, it's the end of their session, but obviously would still be running until the end um, of this evening. Um, but we've, it looks like we've got a close to a new high. Um, if you remember me saying earlier in the week when we had a, this devaluation and this run um, to the downside or weakening one here well, that was uh, matched by significant uh, bearish moves on the major uh, US equities markets. Um, the Chinese economy is struggling, it's a manufacturing economy, um, it needs or potentially needs to devalue its currency to make its uh, exports more competitive, um, particularly when we're looking at a potential slowdown in the rest of the world um, following the uncertainty of Brexit etc. Um, and the potential that US rate rises aren't now going to happen uh, in the short term. Over on the Nikkei, the Japanese equities, Mark spoke about this uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, we're looking at a level circa 15,000 here. Um, we had a touchdown here, a retest of this triangle, a, another test of this level here. This coincides with what we've been seeing or what we see as a Bank of Japan intervention in the um, US dollar yen exchange rate. Um, when the when they weaken the yen, we will see a rise in the um, equities markets, be working inversely to that. If the uh, the Japanese government are desperately trying not to allow the yen to um, appreciate any more, um, again because Japan is a, a big exporting, a big manufacturing con country, they need their the products they produce to be competitive. Um, in world markets and an increasing yen price will um, be negative to that which would see a fall but if we see uh, let's say we see um, good NFP figures today we'll see a rise in the dollar um, and we should see yen prices uh, falling off or yet the yen weakening um, which would uh, see us with a return to a, a bullish move in this market. Here is the dollar yen chart. What I've got marked here. This is a zone where, um, back on the morning of the Brexit result, we saw what we believe was Bank of Japan intervention. Um, we would anticipate and have been anticipating intervention intervention at this level on an ongoing basis. However, if we were to get poor non-farm payroll numbers today. Um, the power or the, the size of that move might not be something that the Bank of Japan could or were willing to try to um, stop and turn on a sixpence or a dime. Um, so although we've had orders in this market for, well, virtually since the 24th of June uh, at specific levels where we th we think we've seen intervention, those orders won't be on today through NFP simply because um, the move could be so significant plus um, inevitable volatility there. Over on the dollar index, well, again, since Brexit, we've had a we had a strengthening on the dollar there. Um, we had a bear flag here, which we broke out of. We've retested. Um, yesterday was a bullish day, but since then today, um, the price has fallen back down on the dollar. Um, we'll be watching this. Clearly, 96 is a, a key level at the moment. We'll see, expect to see um, further long side. Um, dollar strength, which has been our preferred bias all year. Um, if we get decent NFP figures, if we don't get those, then we're going to see a pullback um, and a weakening of the uh, the US dollar. Okay, over on the euro, well, basically, that's just an inverse pattern of the dollar as usual. Uh, this time, uh, 
a, a flag in the opposite direction. We've retested and effectively we appear to be waiting for a decision um, around this 1.1 level here, the decision coming out of NFP. Over on the S&P 500, well, we've had a, 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 a quiet, well, not a quiet week because it's been quite volatile, but an indecisive week um, to date. This is the daily chart, but um, we had a very bullish mo um, period following um, NFP, sorry, following the Brexit announcement and clear some clear indecision here. As we said, if we get some good... Um, employment figures some dollar strength we should see this market falling away um f for the reason of the dollar strength but also um that could, would lead to a, a weakening in the one exchange rate potentially which is another reason why we might see downside in this market okay gold um we've an, oh we took an order yesterday on a four hour chart um, we've had a Kotick Stream signal um, indicating a high in this market for quite a long time. We got a, um, a signal, or we got a, a high on the four-hour chart yesterday, met our rules, we short this market, um, hoping to get this morning to a point where we can move a stop to break even, potentially even have, have some of the money off the table, um, but we will be... Um, making a de definitive decision before say 12 o'clock on either closing the trade out reducing the risk moving the stop um we don't as a rule like any open risk or in into non-farm uh, payroll um we also are looking um for a short trade on crude oil um, we've been watching this level at around $46 for a considerable period of time. You can see lovely tests of this level, uh, even to the day before yesterday. We've had a breakthrough, and we're looking for a pullback to this level. Same rules apply, though. If this doesn't happen um, this morning or isn't conclusive, um, we'll take the uh, resting order off. Um, if it triggers, we'll decide what to do with it at that point of time. But again, not wanting to go into uh, a great deal into any. NFP with any great risk on the table. Commodities have been extremely good to us in the last few weeks. You'll have seen us talking about uh, corn. Um, we're already in the region of 7% up on corn um, over the last few weeks. Yesterday we got an entry into soya beans at, uh, at $11 here. We had previously been short on a cot extreme signal up here. Got stopped out at break even at this point before we'd had the opportunity to uh, take profits because we have a, lo a longer term picture so we don't take profits quite as quickly in commodities markets as a rule. Yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday we had a really strong move down but then towards the end of the day um, soybeans rallied really really strongly back up back up to the um, $11 less level that didn't give us an opportunity to place an end of day trade um, price then perfectly retested uh, the lower side of this triangle here um, and left a perfect four hour entry that I have to be honest uh, I certainly missed or we missed um, we left an order in at 11 and price came shooting came down to around this level shooting back up and then yesterday afternoon on some dollar strength sold off really significantly um, and that's a nice market to be in. We've had a cut extreme signal. Soya beans are um, seasonally uh, short and it's extreme. Uh, if you look at seasonality chart, uh, it's, it's, it's a big, big seasonal move potentially. Um, so we are looking for levels down here in the longer term and, and we'll be looking for opportunities um, to scale into this market. At the moment, we've got stops at break even, um, but there are several levels of interest down here. Uh, if we get um, a good NFP figures, we should see some more dollar strength. Dollar strength is always good if you're shorting commodities. Uh, because they're priced in dollars, they are inevitably uh, react inversely. Uh, we're also this week, we're in a coffee trade. Uh, again, a cot extreme signal. Um, I don't remember seasonality on this one, um, but the details of the cot buying and selling um, gave us a very specific uh, 
decision that this was the area we previously trailed the tra traded this level or this price without uh success um we took a small no yeah i think we took a small loss on that um but we're in again here again looking for the downside t1 profits we're looking at around the level of this level here and that's our t target there towards the bottom of the channel okay so Commodities of where it's been at for us, um, we analyse commitment of traders and seasonality. Um, if you're finding it difficult to trade the FX markets following Brexit, something you really possibly want to think about. We're also looking at imminent opportunities um, on sugar, natural gas and orange juice, uh, in addition to the markets we're already in. Um, one of the uh, big things for that is commitment to traders analysis, seasonal analysis. These are all things you can add to your trading skills. Um, if you'd like to uh, learn more about what we do at Phoenix Blue, uh, on July the 19th, we have a four hour uh, free trading session with one of our senior traders. Um, you'll be able to ask as many questions as you want during the trading session. Um, we'll also be around answering questions and, and whatever you need to know after. Afterwards. If you'd like to attend that, uh, either pop on the website um, at phoenixblue.co.uk or send us an email to info at phoenixblue.co.uk. Um, we will be uh, trading all the markets at that mo through the day. If you are interested in, in maybe developing another string to your bow um, with commodities, that's definitely something you want to come and talk to us about then. If you have any other questions whatsoever, info at Phoenix Blue or anything I've said this morning, any specific questions, I'm Tom at phoenixblue.co.uk. Um, great, right. Have a good day. Make sure the everything's battened down for non-farm at 1.30. Um, another successful week here at Phoenix Blue. I hope it's been the same for you. Um, have a good weekend and we'll speak to you next week.